Minnie Graham was a great grandmother. At 97, she suffered from dementia. She was a fine Christian woman and um, very loving. She would do anything for anybody. Graham lived in a nursing home outside Dallas for about a year when her family noticed bruises on her. They said that she fell out of her wheelchair. Do you believe that's what happened? Absolutely not. So Graham's family placed this clock equipped with a hidden camera in her bedroom. Graham resisted being changed. A nursing aide mocked her. Pulled, pushed, then what sounds like a slap. The video also caught another aide shoving her in the back and face. That should never happen to people, ever. In nursing homes, anywhere. Brian Lee is executive director of Families for Better Care. His nonprofit elder advocacy group released what it says is the first comprehensive state-by-state -state review of nursing home care. It ranks and grades states based on 2012 federal data, combining staffing, inspections, deficiencies, and complaints. Alaska, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and Hawaii got A's, getting F's, Texas, Louisiana, Indiana, and Oklahoma, where this hidden video caught a nursing assistant shoving a glove in a woman's mouth. In Ohio, which lacks staff, video caught a caregiver flinging a senior onto her bed. State officials need to hold nursing homes accountable and nursing homes need to hold themselves accountable and step up and start providing better care. According to the report, just seven states provided nursing home residents with more than one hour of professional nursing care daily. States that did the best had larger and more experienced staff. I was wondering if you could explain your actions on that video tape. We tried to speak to Minnie Graham's nursing aides. They declined. Both were fired and arrested. Their cases are still pending. As for Minnie Graham, she died within weeks of this video. She just gave up on life. She didn't want to live anymore. And then to be treated like that in her last days, you know. Advocates for the elderly say improvements must be made soon. The nursing home population is expected to increase 40% over the next decade. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News. We do a lot of stories on family, and we know families with loved ones in a nursing home often wonder, are they really okay? And it's a nightmare if we believe that they're being mistreated. We have a horrific example of what can go wrong. Her colleague Jane Velez Mitchell brought this story tonight, to light that is, last night on Issues. Let's get you the story. Tragic story. 78-year-old Lois McAllister is her name. She has Alzheimer's disease. Lois was allegedly being harassed by workers at the nursing home. But before a camera was put in the room and the video was available, the family thought, really, everything was okay. Mary, when did your mother uh, first tell you that workers were hit, abusing her, and what exactly did she say to you? It was in early March. Uh, she kept saying that she was being hurt. Her arms were being pulled and twisted. She was being punched. So I went to an administrator and told them what my mother had told me, and she got back to me and told me that it was due to her a change in her mental status. So in other words, they were suggesting her dementia had gotten worse. The family couldn't trust mom here. Well, the family didn't take any chances, put a camera in the room. Here's what they saw. Now, it's dark video, tough to see what's happening here. Uh, and this video given to us, by the way, by Haverford Township Police Department. Lois's daughter, son-in-law, they allege this is mom being taunted, mocked, sometime when she wasn't even fully clothed. Now, Lois's daughter and son-in-law, they saw this video. Obviously, they were furious, but just heartbroken. I don't know what joy you can derive from harming an elderly person, especially one who's depending on you to take care of them. You know, we trusted them to take good care of her, and they didn't do it. What a great point. Who does that? Who, could, who has the heart or lack thereof to do that? Now, three workers have been charged here with aggravated assault, criminal conspiracy, neglect of a dependent person, harassment, and reckless endangerment. They've lost their jobs, from what we understand. We do have a statement or part of the statement from the company that runs the nursing home, Sunrise Senior Living. Here's part of it saying we cherish each and every resident we serve and take these allegations very seriously. We've cooperated closely with law enforcement. They go on to say the three individuals involved in this incident 
incident have been dismissed from their jobs. And despite the unacceptable actions of a few, please remember that the Quadrangle is filled with many great and compassionate caregivers and are dedicated to delivering superior care to hundreds of residents. But Lois McAllister's family not satisfied with the company's response. They're filing a lawsuit against the Senior Living Center. Want again bring in my colleague Jane Velez Mitchell, who did a great job bringing this story to light. Jane, I know this is near and dear to your heart and mine. Your mom's in her 90s, my dad's in his uh, mid to upper 80s now. And how do we? I think people see this, they're shocked. They go, How do we make sure a loved one in a situation like this is going to be okay? Well, thank God for nanny cams and hidden cameras because uh, this may have been going on forever. And now, due to modern technology, we're starting to see what happened. Now, the family, uh, Paul and Mary French, says when they went to management of this nursing home, they were told, well, she has Alzheimer's. Essentially, she's not really a credible witness. They, of course, deny that. But that's the problem, in essence, if you're dealing with uh, people who are disabled in some way, uh, how can they defend themselves? How can they say stop it or go and complain when they may not be considered to have a lot of credibility? There was another example in uh, the Los Angeles area not too long ago that was also caught on tape, and these were profoundly disabled women being raped on camera it was caught on camera that they were uh being raped by some of the people who worked there and it was just absolutely horrifying video and then come to find out that a huge percentage of people who work in nursing homes and these kinds of facilities have criminal records so obviously there is some kind of problem there with monitoring these people and of course allowing the people who live there to have a certain modicum of privacy as well you want to have cameras on them 20 for seven and have strangers looking at them but then again does every family member want to have to resort to putting a hidden camera in uh, to monitor the situation i don't necessarily have the answer but uh, obviously this is a problem that is more than just an isolated incident mm -hmm. here or there we're now hearing too many of these kinds of stories yeah you know I, I had a chance to make a phone call to the alzheimer's association and some of their tips are very good in other words if you make the difficult decision to have a family member go into a nursing facility you're still a care caregiver visit often go there often make a relationship have a strong relationship with those that are your parents or your loved ones caregivers and find out who is going to be the caregiver the shifts change and things like that uh, because we want to be so in touch and, and be in tune with our relatives and uh, uh, I think that's an important point here Jane yeah absolutely and I'm not saying that these three young women who are arrested in this latest case in Pennsylvania have criminal records or rap sheets I don't know but I do think there should be a law that says you shouldn't be able to work in a nursing home if you've got a rap sheet this is uh, a, a population that again cannot defend itself they're essentially voiceless and helpless so uh, why are we having people who uh, have perhaps a proclivity towards violence or uh, inappropriate behavior watching them I think that's an excellent point. It's, I think that's another fact that you brought out that's shocking to so many, that so many that have been convicted of crimes are taking care of those that we love so much. Jane, again, great job on this. Uh, always good talking to you. And I know you and I are, since it's so close to our hearts, we're going to keep following this story. make the distinction for us. This is not malpractice. This is a criminal offense, exactly right? Exactly right. Because he's not a physician. He's not a nurse. So it's not, it's not medical malpractice. But I think this is criminal. Like you said, this is assault. This is battery. This is elder abuse. And it's, it's just so sad because he's a caretaker. He's the one that's supposed to be protecting and caring for this elderly woman, not abusing her like that. And the fact that she's helpless, that's what right. gets me. I that's know. not even a man. That's an old woman with dementia. And he knows she can't speak up. She can't tell anyone. And so I'm so glad the family caught this on tape so he can't do this again. And, and Wendy, I think people need to know this is more common than you might think. As, as right. Shagun is, is not just in nursing homes, but out there in the world, people get very frustrated with these the care, their caretaking demands and they do things that are not appropriate and sadly even loving family members lose their patience when they get caregiver burnout mm -hmm. um, and also remember a lot of family members are intertwined emotionally with their aging mother right, and they right. can get the older person doesn't know what they're saying and could say something awful to them and set them off but I think the really big piece here is we need to talk about you know people use technology to monitor all kinds of stupid stuff in the world we need to monitor our moms and our 
our dads, not our pets in pet hotels. Right. Yes. We could be putting yes. we could putting nanny cams in well, every single nursing happen. home in America. I, I, well, I think, well, I think so. that's the way, that's the way of the future. Wendy, so. I'm yeah. yeah, I'm so glad that you brought that up. That was my very point. If this is so common, which is horrific to even state, if so many elderly people are going through this without us knowing and they have no voice, why don't we implement well, something that, to prevent uh, this but from Sam, happening? Because Sam, because the dirty secret, the dirty secret, up. the dirty secret is people dump their elderly parents in nursing well, homes okay. and kind of forget uh, uh, about oh, them. Oh, well, now this, but the, uh, all right, I, Shagoon, you said something outrageous. I'm going to bring in the the daughter of the elderly woman you saw in the video, Rose Rose Rodriguez. And Rose, I'm certain you did not dump your mom in a nursing home. And you actually, the reason we know about what happened is you were attentive and suspected something was wrong. Uh, yes, uh, that is true. I did not dump my mother. I adore this woman. Uh, she is the most precious person in my in my world. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she was ill, and uh, they suggested uh, a skilled nursing facility for for rehab, and then uh, she would be able to come home uh, in about two weeks. But she didn't respond to to uh, therapy. And then that just put her in a totally different category. She went from somewhat active and helping, you know, getting from point A to point B to being totally bedridden, uh, needing a lift to get her out of bed. And Aww. she just never recouped from that UPI. They tell me <sighs> that's very dangerous in elderly people. How, how, how is she now? She's doing well. She, she's doing well. She's still, um, you know, she. I think she's still scared because just by her look and just the way she, her, her body uh, language. But uh, we assure her every day that she is in a better place now. And um, I'm still, still with her. And I go to visit her every day. And um, she can count on me to be there. To okay. The following there, program there, may there. contain we're, we're, scenes that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. A special year-long marketplace investigation undercover inside nursing homes. And I was shouting my head off and they didn't come in. Families search for the truth. My poor mother. Has long-term care reached the crisis point? Oh, we're way past that. I think we've been in crisis for years. Because if this happened in a daycare, that daycare would be shut down in five minutes. How to fight for better care on your marketplace. One of these men will soon be dead. A violent attack inside a nursing home against 84-year-old Meyer Sadoway. It's caught on security video. Video the home, Baycrest, kept hidden from Meyer's family. It's, it's, uh, it's shocking. Uh, it's, it's a horror movie. Diane Miles and Frances Sadaway are his sisters. You get a phone call? I got a phone call. And what did they say? I, that Meyer had two falls. It would take months after the attack, after Meyer's death, for his sisters to see the video and learn the truth. I started crying yeah. hysterically, and I thought, I can't believe They said it. they can explain everything. That's that was, right. they, They'll explain it. So I said, there's nothing to explain. It's very clear what happened with, between Meyer and this resident, how Meyer ended up dead. What happened to Meyer is not isolated in Ontario. It's why we're heading inside nursing homes. Because violence is on the rise. Resident assaults have doubled in just six years, from four a day to now almost nine. This is allowed. A shocking increase. And we want to know why. So we're visiting homes with some of the highest reported rates of abuse and neglect. Did you call? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Thanks. We arrive in time to rescue this woman. I think somebody needs help outside. Oh, Thank you. I'm going to give her trouble. I know you are crazy. Her wheelchair hooked on a flower pot. You're not even hugged. Hi, guys. 
it's minus 18, and that woman, that resident of a long-term care facility, is stuck outside. Oh, my God. Miranda Ferrier worked in long-term care for seven years. We have no idea how long she was out there before we found her. There is no excuse for that. Now she runs an association for 31,000 personal support workers. Did you see how they jumped up? when you guys went in there and said there's someone outside who needs help because, oh, oops. Oops can go bad when it's minus 18. Oops can go bad very quickly. At a different nursing home in London, Ontario, we overhear workers warn that care is suffering. No time for proper baths. How often does that happen in Every long single day. And no, I'm not getting every single day. Because they don't have the time. And why don't they have the time? Because there's not enough people on the floor. There's not enough PSWs on the floor. No time to check on residents. Incredibly, these caregivers aren't just griping, they're complaining to a visiting government inspector. But the inspector says she's powerless. And that is legal because no province has set a minimum ratio of caregivers to residents the way there is for other vulnerable populations like daycares. Which I don't think is very fair. These people built the, the society we live in today and now they need us more than ever and we're failing them. We are failing them in a big, big way. Miranda says understaffing is a clear factor in rising abuse and neglect. When we're talking about putting more care into the system, we need to talk about more scrubs on the floor. How many staff do you have? We need to talk ratios. I truly believe that is the answer to so many of our problems. Problems documented in thousands of government inspection reports. A resident dragging another resident who was screaming. Residents who punch, kick, and scratch. And one who died after being struck by another elderly resident. They have the, the three meal services and then the snack carts in between. Back on Hidden Camera, we want to hear what homes are telling families about staffing on official tours. In the mornings, for getting everybody out of bed, there's three PSWs per floor. So your minimum ratio would be 10 residents to one PSW. Okay. On our secure home area, the that ratio is actually seven to seven residents to one PSW. In my experience, when people have gone into long-term care facilities and they ask what is the minimum ratio, they say one to eight, but that's not the truth. The real story, not one province has set a minimum. But there's no rule. No, there's no rule. No law. No law. No requirement. Nope. But we're hearing a different story from some care home administrators. It's all more or less ministry regulated. Okay. And you're allotted so many. That isn't true. There is no allotment, no minimums, but we hear it again. So there is a minimum requirement um, for X amount of staff per resident, and we meet those requirements, and there's times that we exceed um, the minimum requirement. So what gives? Well, I mean, what, what are they going to say to a family that's coming in on a tour? Think about that. They're there to sell. Well, don't lie. Oh, but they're there to sell. There is no ministry standard. Do you think the current staffing levels in Ontario long-term care are sufficient? Absolutely not. Lawyer and elder advocate Jane Medes says nursing homes aren't staffed to deal with the changing profile of the average resident. We have a much older and sicker and frailer population. Um, so you're getting more people who um, are uh, acting out and have these behaviors. Is there a direct line for you 
between the higher number of abuse incidents and people with dementia? Absolutely. I think that that's a huge number um, of the people that are uh, acting out and having these behaviors. Homes used to manage aggression with drugs. Many residents with dementia were given powerful antipsychotics. About a quarter of all residents are given antipsychotic drugs, and they may not all really need them. She couldn't walk, and a lot of times she couldn't talk. What we are now doing is drugging our senior population into submission. There was pushback, and antipsychotic use dropped by a third. Seems like good news, but what happened? We hired statisticians to dig deep in the data, and they confirm as antipsychotic drug use went down, abuse in nursing homes has gone up. Doesn't necessarily mean one caused the other, but without extra staff to deal with the aggressive behavior, reducing drug use may have had unintended consequences. People like Meyer face that violence. He tried to block a larger man, a wanderer with dementia, from entering his room and was attacked. When staff do react, they lead the aggressor away. But there's no one to help Meyer. He struggles and falls, trying to escape. His hip is broken that night. He dies four days after the attack. Meyer must have been afraid. And he was trying to move himself to get up. And he was having difficulty getting up. And they just walked away. It's been five years since Diane and Francis lost their brother. He enjoyed the, the fresh air and seeing other people and moving around. There was no autopsy, but his family connects the violence to his unexpected death. We were told it's going to be specially trained staff mm -hmm. who have special training for these, for the behaviors of these residents. We asked Baycrest to explain. They won't talk about what happened to Meyer Sadaway, but do tell us no amount of care planning or staffing can prevent all altercations. Miranda Ferrier is stunned by Meyer's death, but not surprised. That kind of thing is happening more. All the a lot time. more. All the time. All the time. We need more accountability and oversight. That's what we need. The shocking video. I literally collapsed. I uh, observed my grandfather being physically punched in the face 11 times. What is your government doing to try to stop and reduce violence in long-term care homes? Well, I do believe that we've made important improvements. Crying out for care on your marketplace. The video is shocking. An elderly resident of a care home being punched by the very person meant to look after him. I literally collapsed. It was the most gut-wrenching thing I have ever gone through in my entire life. My grandfather was my hero growing up. His background is in law enforcement, and so he was very stern. He was a disciplinarian. He was a source of comfort, stability for our family. For five years, Daniel Nisrella has watched George Karam's slow slide into dementia. It is one of the most difficult decisions and experiences you can ever undertake as a family. You have a loved one, you want to provide the comfort and care for them as best as possible. But Daniel worried there was harm instead of care at Ottawa's Gary J. Armstrong long-term care home. What prompted you to put a camera in your grandfather's room? After a series of incidents where my grandfather suffered numerous cuts, bruises, and lesions to his head, his arms, his person. The camera is visible to anyone in the room. If something like that can happen with a camera in the room that's known to staff, what else are we missing in places where there aren't cameras? Mm, it's really scary to think. Miranda Ferrier worked as a PSW, a personal support worker, and now represents Ontario's PSWs. What I always say to people is imagine being that resident in that bed. You're confused, you're elderly, you don't know what's going on, and there's this person that's jerking you around to do your care. Wouldn't you fight as well? If he's so combative, what you do is you cover him, you make sure he's safe, his dignity is intact, and you leave the room. The worker on the video was fired, charged and pled guilty to assault. 
Our year-long analysis shows this wasn't isolated. Reported incidents inside Ontario homes between staff and residents went from about 900 in 2011 up to almost 2,200 in 2016. A jump of almost 150% and abuse can take many forms. I have diarrhea one day and I spent an entire hour laying around feces. On hidden camera, we hear stories of neglect. And uh, I could hear them talking out in the hall and I'm shouting my head off and they didn't come in. This resident has asked us to hide her identity because she's worried staff will punish her for speaking out. Is there just not enough staff, or does the staff just not care enough? Well, so I think it's a case that both things are true. These aren't isolated incidents. It's systemic, it's widespread. And yes, as the population continues to age, as the baby boomers are going to be entering long-term care in droves in the next 20 years, this is the foremost concern for Canadian society right now. Daniel is a lawyer, and in the wake of his own grandfather's abuse, he's become an advocate for elderly residents in care. This is mom when she worked at the Shadow Laurier. This is her in the back. She was a, what was a switchboard operator back then. People like Diana Pepin's mother. Mom is now turned 86 years old. Had she not had a head trauma, uh, she'd be doing 5K a day, power walking. She now lives in another city-run Ottawa home. She gave everything she had, worked so hard, and should have had a really nice end to her life. But a car accident leaves her with permanent injuries. 2014, my father found it became too difficult. I never wanted her. <laughs> Sorry. I never wanted her to go to long-term care. It's an emotional decision. Hi, Mommy. Hi. Made worse for Diana, a registered nurse. Well, the first thing that I picked on was uh, infection control. I see that what I would consider to be uh, infection control was non-existent. Today's not a very comfortable day, is it? She tells management about her concerns, and the home takes action, telling her she's not welcome. I can be in the home from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. My restriction is I can't be in the room when they're providing care for my mother. That's it. Now you're a little straighter. Okay. So Diana installs security cameras in her mother's room. I call her. This is the PSW who has taken care of mom for several years. She's having an interaction with my father. That's what I do, I'm calling her your name. She's showing how well she dresses mom. She color coordinates for it her. It sounds caring. V very nice. The socks are matching the nightgown. It sounds good. And you think this is a nice relationship. But when her father leaves the room, so do the nice words. My poor mother. Yeah. I don't imagine this has been an, an easy road by any stretch. Oh, it makes you not trust people. That's, you know what? It just makes you not trust your own judgment sometimes when you think pe people are okay. And then... You find out that you can be so duped. The PSW in the video was fired, along with two bystanders. The city of Ottawa says it has a zero tolerance policy for abuse and has been working on an improvement plan. These are people who really are the most vulnerable. Um, they're more vulnerable in many cases than children because if this happened in a daycare, that daycare would be shut down in five minutes. In Ontario alone, homes have reported about 21,000 incidents of abuse over six years. We share some of those cases with elder advocate Jane Metis. We found a PSW, a personal support worker, returning to work after an allegation of abuse without any further training. Another incident of resident-to-resident -resident sexual abuse. And then finally, resident-to-resident -resident abuse that took place while the staff were asleep. 
Are these isolated or do you hear about things like that all the time? I hear about these things all the time. There's nothing worse than getting a call from a family member telling you about how they walked into a room and found their family member being assaulted or discovering that their mother was sexually assaulted. Um, we have people crying on the phone every day. And these are incidents under which they caught it. That's correct. And they're not always caught. I would say that many of them aren't. The man on the floor died four days later. What do you say to a family whose loved ones are facing violence, abuse, and neglect? Fighting for better care on your marketplace. We're inside Ontario nursing homes, investigating why abuse rates are skyrocketing. When do we say long-term care has reached the crisis point? Oh, we're way past that. I think we've been in crisis for years. And finally, people are starting to see it. We take that message to Ontario's Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. I'm David. Thanks hey, David. very much for doing Hi, this. Hi, Eric. We tell Eric Hoskins about the dramatic rise we found in resident-on-resident -resident violence. As the minister responsible, are you content that we've gone from four incidents a day in long-term care homes up to nine in just six years? Of course not. Of course not. We're talking about some of the most vulnerable people in our society. I won't stop. I won't rest until those numbers diminish and go to zero. Uh, it's my responsibility as minister. So we show him what happened to 84-year-old Meyer Sadoway. The man on the floor died four days later. I'm very sorry to hear that. That's very, of course, it's very painful to watch. And what do you say to a family who has experienced something like that when there are an increasing number of families whose loved ones are facing violence, abuse, and neglect? Well, first of all, I'd say that I'm very sorry to that family. No family should have to witness or experience that, let alone the tragic um, result. But what I will say is that I take these incidents very, very seriously. Ontario is promising more direct care hours in nursing homes. But many frontline workers say without a minimum number of staff, homes won't improve. This is one of your inspectors saying, we're fighting for that. One of the people who reports to you through your ministry is saying, we're fighting to have a ratio. So we are addressing the staffing issue. As I mentioned, we're adding 15 million more hours across the province. And also we're doing many important things with our Even PSWs. though some of those PSWs say more hours are great, but without more staff, it's kind of meaningless. Well, more hours translates into more staff. There's no legal floor. There's no minimum number no, of But there's ratio. a legal requirement that that staffing ratio, that staffing uh, plan has to reflect the, uh, the nature of the residents that live there. Do you but believe that's the solution to all of this? Well, I think it's part of the solution. As the government searches for a solution, how do you ensure you're choosing a good home for an aging loved one? You need to do your homework before you go in. Speak to people who have family members there. Do the tour. You need to go in at the morning, at night, and evening. Make sure that they are getting the care, that it's not only during sort of the normal visiting hours after work. And from those who are there. What do other people who have vulnerable family members in long-term care homes need to be thinking about? Everybody has to start being an advocate. It's time to stop being afraid. You first saw him on Dragon's Den. I developed a technology to help people's backs get better. Promoting a product that blew them away. That was unbelievable. You get caught up in the moment of the deal. We put his magic clips to the test. I'm not really feeling a whole lot. <laughs> Some people say you're a snake oil salesman. Well, everybody has an opinion. On your next Marketplace. Once you get the money, that's it.
video appears to show a nursing home employee assault an 89-year-old man with dementia. The family of that patient, George's Karam, say they installed a video camera in his room with the hospital's permission because staff members couldn't explain injuries and bruises that he was sustaining. They say he's nonverbal and confined to a wheelchair. Weeks after installing the camera, the family was shocked to see what it captured. Chow, an employee at the facility in Ottawa, Canada, was identified as the man punching Karam in the face repeatedly. He was fired from his job and he pled guilty to one count of assault. He's awaiting sentencing. The hospital released a statement to local media saying it takes its commitment to the safety of its residents seriously. For InsideEdition.com, I'm Mara Matsubano.